Kraftwerk, Germany's own Fab Four. In fact, to many, they're as influential on modern music as the original Fab Four from Liverpool. They brought electronic music into the mainstream and paved the way for just about every electronic music act since. This is the story of their evolution told through the instruments they use and how they use them, from the usual classics to the weird and obscure. Kraftwerk began with the meeting of Florian Schneider and Ralph Hutter, both of whom were trained musicians, attending an improvisation class in Dusseldorf. Together they joined the group called The Organization and released the album Tone Float in 1970, but split shortly after. They remained together, however, and the same year they formed Kraftwerk, releasing their first album of experimental rock. At this stage, they were still very much using traditional instruments, with Florian playing the flute and guitar, and Ralph mainly playing the organ, such as the Hammond and the Farfisa. Although they were playing conventional instruments, they were already processing them in quite a progressive way. Florian was using tape echo, fuzz and wah-wah, and also electronic synthesis in the form of ring modulation and pitch to voltage converters. A second album followed in 1972 along the same experimental freeform approach and saw them tour Germany and France with a variety of musicians including Wolfgang Fleur, who would later become a member of the classic lineup. Ralph and Florian were the main producers of the first two albums, along with Connie Plank. Connie had a studio that already contained some of the classic synthesizers of the day, and Fleur recalls one such visit to his studio. Florian was very nervous and very excited because Connie had a little machine that looked like a home organ made from wood. I said, what's so special about it? And he said, look at the knobs, the filters and everything. It's a synthesizer. I hadn't even heard the name, but he connected it and it was the first time I'd hear that fat analog sound. That was the mini Moog, and we thought, this is the next step. With Kraftwerk's third album, Ralph and Florian, there was definitely a mini Moog present at their Kling Klang studio as pictured in the back of the LP. Not only that, but the EMS synth the AKS. This album definitely sets the new direction they began to take, although despite its importance, the pair never really considered this or their first two albums as part of the Kraftwerk story. More of a prequel to the real Kraftwerk, which is why you won't find it on Spotify. Another notable aspect of this album is the first use of the vocoder by the group, appearing on the track Tan's Music and Ananas Symphony. This early vocoder was custom made by West Germany's National Institute for Science, but according to Florian, often didn't work properly. Many years later, in 2005, Florian put this very same vocoder on eBay, which attracted the attention of Daniel Miller of Mute Records, who made the winning bid of $12,500. He likened its importance to the electronic music world, as Hendrix of Strat is to the world of rock. The group would go on to use many different vocoders over the years, including the EMS 2000, the Roland SVC 350, the Roland VP 330, and the Sennheiser VSM 201, to name just a few. For their fourth album, the pair were keen to have Fleur join as drummer, but the lack of drums spurred them on to create bespoke controllers to trigger existing drum machines. There were many preset beat machines available, either as part of an organ like the Farfeaser or in a separate box. In fact, they had already used one on Ralph and Florian, but this time they wanted to control the beat being played, rather than rely on pre-existing programs. This setup looks a little primitive today, but back in 1974 this was almost science fiction material. Their appearance on the British TV programme Tomorrow's World was a watershed moment for a lot of people who'd never seen anything like it before. The drum machines being used at the time were most likely the Farfisa Rhythm 10 the Vox Percussion King, and later the Gibson Maestro Rhythm King. Arranging some of these Maestro and Farfisa samples outside their rigid pre-programming, you can definitely get a vibe of what was to feature on their next album. Autobahn was their fourth album, but very much their first to feature the classic Kraftwerk sound. There are still some traditional instruments in the album, including violin and guitar, played by Klaus Roder, but the overall feel is very much electronic, and with the title track being a pulsing and hypnotic form of electronic pop, it signified a sea change in music that would influence so many musicians, including David Bowie, who would later even move to Germany and name a track after Schneider, with the track V2 Schneider featured on his album Heroes. The main synths on this album were the Mini Moog that was predominantly playing bass lines and Hutter's newly purchased Arp Odyssey. The EMS synth remained in use, as did a bunch of effects to modulate both the beats and synths. 
Phases such as the short compact phase in A and the more famous Mutron biphase can be heard creating dynamic movement in the soundscapes. Due to its success, the group embarked on a tour taken in Britain and the USA and Carl Bartos joined the group to replace Klaus Roder. And with this, the classic lineup was formed. With this classic lineup, they released their next album, Radioactivity, in 1977. Further use of effects such as Roland Space Echo is evident, as is the Mellotron like instrument, the Orchestron, which was purchased during the Autobahn tour. The Orchestron, like the Mellotron, played recorded sounds when a key was pressed. Unlike the Mellotron, though, this was done by reading an optical disc rather than tape. Mostly these were orchestral in nature, and in this case it was a recording of a choir. This haunting sound can be heard on the track Uranium. New Order was so taken by this that they sampled it for their hit Blue Monday. This album was quickly followed the next year by Trans Europe Express. The most notable evolution in its sound came by the use of the customised 62-step 16-channel sequencer named the Synthonorma. The precise method of performing notes and rhythms was a huge sign of things to come in the world of music. The machine's precision was radically different from anything that had gone before in the world of pop music. The arrangements were stark and minimalist, and inspired many artists including Africa Mambata, who sampled the track for his classic Planet Rock. Mambata said he could immediately hear the funk when playing the record, and featured it a lot in his DJ sets before sampling it. This sequencer-based approach definitely influenced the title track of the next record, Man Machine, with one of the key tracks being We Are The Robots. The band were keen to represent themselves as robots, or at the album launch as mannequins, both attempts to appear almost beyond human as their music suggested. New additions to their synth lineup were the micro mode and poly mode. Both of these can be heard on one of their biggest hits, the model, with the bass being provided by the micro mode and the poly for the melody. The poly mode was released in 1975 and it was one of the first polyphonic synthesizers and capable of producing up to eight notes simultaneously. After a few years of recording hiatus, the group reconvened in 1981 for the album Computer World. During the intervening years, the world had very much become computerized, with devices such as calculators becoming commonplace, and even children's toys becoming more high-tech. In an attempt to reflect this, they featured a couple of these toys, like the Jubrex Stylophone, as heard in the middle part of the track Pocket Calculator. Amazingly, the Pocket Calculator was also used as an instrument itself, namely the Casio FX501B, prompting Casio to release a Kraftwerk branded calculator later on. The track also features the bizarre, but I'm so glad it exists, Mattel BG Mini keyboard. They would even use this live along with the stylophone and calculator. Another notably bizarre but highly effective inclusion is the Texas Instruments language translator machine on the track Numbers. The same audio engine appears to be on their children's educational toy, the Speak and Spell. And the startup sound for this sounds very familiar. Kraftwerk, of course, went on to release more music, but these five albums, for many, represent a massive leap and create a whole genre that has influenced just about every aspect of modern music today. Correct.